afternoon and welcome to this live broadcast. Today being on Wednesday, December 9, 2020, this is a special sitting of the Senate brought to you courtesy of the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit. This is in collaboration with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. The Senate happens to be convening on a time senators happen to be on recess, but they are back to business to take care of a very important matter. This is the consideration of removal from office by impeachment of the senator for Nairobi County, that is Senator Mike Mbovi Sonko. And according to today's order paper, that is the only business said to be transacted before the floor of the House. And the motion is on the establishment of a select committee. This is to investigate the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the governor for Nairobi County. The motion will be moved by Senate Majority Leader. And it says that there is, whereas pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution, as well as Section 33 of the County Government Act of 2012, on Wednesday, the date being that of December 2020, the Nairobi City County Assembly approved a motion for removal from office. This is by impeachment of the Honorable Mike Mbove Sonko, the governor for Nairobi City County. And further, were asked by letter dated reference number NCCA stroke SPK stroke 12 stroke 2020 subsection one, dated Friday 4th of December 2020, a letter that was received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on Friday, the 4th of December, the Speaker of the County Assembly of Nairobi County informed the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of the motion by the Nairobi County Assembly and further forwarded to the Speaker of the Senate the documents and evidence of the proceedings of the Assembly. And we're asked, pursuant to section number 33, subsection 3B of the County Government Act number 2012, and standing orders number 75, subsection 1B of the Senate. The Senate, by resolution, may appoint a special committee comprising of 11 members to investigate the matter before the Senate. Now, therefore, pursuant to section number 33, subsection 3B, this is of the County Government Act number 2012, and standing orders number 75, subsection 1B, the Senate resolves to establish a special committee. 11 members have been proposed to sit into that committee of inquiry, and they comprise Senator for Nandi County, Senator Samson Cherarge, Munyihaji Mohamed Faki for Mombasa, Petronira Wele Rukorio, the nominated senator, as well as the senator for Kisumu County, just to mention but a few. The business of the Senate is about to kick off with the entry of the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Ken Lusaka. I'll now hand you over for the live broadcast. Enjoy your viewing. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, we beseech you to behold with your abundant favor and blessings. As your servants whom you have been pleased to call to leadership positions in this republic, we seek guidance to treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interests you have committed to our charge. Amen.
Order, 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 members, take your seats. Order. Take your seats and maintain social distance. Order number one, communication from the chair. Honorable Senators, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you back to the Senate for this special sitting. Soon after proceeding, take your seats, Honorable Senators. Proceeding on recess because we have to fulfill our constitutional mandate expeditiously. By a later reference, NCCA stroke SPK 12, 2021, dated 14th, 20, 2020, and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on fr Friday, 4th, December 2020, the Speaker of the National City County Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate that a sitting of the Nairobi City County Assembly held on Thursday, 3rd December 2020, the Nairobi City Council Assembly had approved a motion for the removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Mike Mbuvi Songo, the governor of Nairobi City County. Attached to the letter were the following documents. A, order paper of the Nairobi City County Assembly dated Thursday, 3rd December 2020. Notice of motion by Honorable Michael Okumok, Adam MCA, dated 25th November 2020. Three, C, votes and proceedings of the Nairobi City County Assembly dated Thursday, 3rd th uh, December 2020. B, signatures in support of the impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo. The motion cites the following as the grounds for the removal of the governor. A, gross violation of the Constitution or any other law, gross violation of the Constitution, County Government Act 2012, the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015, and the Public Finance Management Act 2012. B, abuse of office and C, gross misconduct. Further details on each of the part uh, particulars are set out in the motion. Honorable Senator, Section 33 of the County Government Act, read, uh, to, read together with Standing Order 75-1, uh, provide that within seven days after receiving notice of a resolution from the Speaker of the County Assembly, the Speaker of the Senate shall convene a meeting of the Senate to hear charges against the Governor. It is on this basis that I accepted and approved the request by the Senate minority, Majority Leader, supported by 17 others, to convene this special sitting. I subsequently gazetted this special sitting via gazette notice number 103008 uh, of 7th December 2020, contained in a special issue of Kenya Gazette volume um, number 20, uh, 2, XX1 2017. Honorable Senators, in terms of Article 181 of the Constitution, Section 33 of the County Government Act 2012, and Standing Order 751A of the Senate Standing Orders, the Speaker of the Senate is required, and I quote, within seven days after receiving notice of a resolution from the Speaker of a county, a county Assembly to convene a meeting of the Senate to hear charges against the Governor. Eight, consequently, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Section 33B of the County Government Act and Standing Order 751A of the Senate Standing Orders, I hereby proceed to read the charges against Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo, the Governor of Nairobi City County. A, gross violation of the Constitution or any other law. Gross violation of the Constitution, the County Government Act 2012, the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015, and the Public Finance Management Act of 2012. The, the particulars cited under this ground are as follows. A, the Governor of Nairobi City Council has violated Articles 201A, B, E of the Constitution of Kenya on principles of public finance management and Section 154 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the County Allocation of Revenue Act 2015 on the use of conditional grants from the national government by the diversion or negligently causing to be diverted conditional grants. The con B, the, of the, 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 the Governor of uh, Nairobi County, City County, has violated Article 10, Article 201B and D of the Constitution by failing, refusing, and or neglecting to comply with the provisions of Regulation 20 of the Public Finance Management County Government Regulations 2015 which failure, refusal, and stroke or ne negligence has compromised the provisions of services envisioned under Part 2 of the fourth schedule to the Constitution 2010 in earlier most crucial provisions of health services during the raging pandemic. C, the Governor of Nairobi City Council has violated his Article 187 2A of the Constitution, Article 5 2 
of the deed of transfer by his continued willful refusal to execute the statutory warrants essential to the release of funds from the county revenue fund, which has grounded the provisions of services of not only the county executive, but of the Nairobi Metropolitan Service, NMS, and its exercise of the transferred functions. This action violates the provisions of Article 187.2a of the Constitution and Article 5.2 of the deed of transfer, whence the county assembly duly adopted the budget for the financial year 2020-2021 and enacted the Nairobi City County Appropriation Bill 2020. Okay, I continue. The governor has violated the provisions of Article 183 of the Constitution as read together with Standing Order Number 193 by undermining the authority of the county assembly, whence the governor has refused and or failed to implement resolutions of the county assembly or forward a report detailing his inability to do so in line with Article 183 of the Constitution as read together with Standing Order Number 193, which with respect to county public debt and public management under the provisions of Section 123 of the Public Finance Management Act 2020. Failure of which the county has been unable to control and manage county public debt. The result is unmitigated accrual of debt which has ballooned the county's overall uh, debt to unmanageable levels, rising from Kenya shillings 556 billion when he assumed office in 2017 to 76.7 .7 billion as at 31st December 2019 hence further violating the provisions of Article 201 of the Constitution. E, the governor has violated Article 2271 of the Constitution on procurement of goods and services as read together with provisions of Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015 by flouting the principles of public finance management in as far as the public procurement of goods and services is con concerned. Uh, F, the governor violated Section 35.4 and Section 45.1 of the County Government Act 2012 as read together with Section 104 and Section 148 of the PFM, whence between 2018 and early 2019 and contrary to the law, the Office of the County Executive Committee Member for Finance and that of the Chief Officer for Finance were held by the same person, one Ms. Winfred Gashagu, which situation occasioned confusion, inefficiencies as the County Treasury, hence failing to promote good governance at the County Treasury no failing to promote good governance and compromising the doctrine of transparency and accounta accountability within the county government. The governor has violated the provisions of section 104, the PFM on the responsibilities and powers of the county treasury. Whence through inaction, action, omissions and commissions, he continues to preside over a broken public finance management system, whence the county treasury remains ineffective. Despite various resolutions of the county assembly, urging the governor to improve efficiencies by decentralizing the finance function to sectors as required by the provisions of Section 148 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the county continues to operate in contravention of the law. H, the governor has violated the provisions of Article 5.5 5, 5 .5 of the deed of transfer of functions by his refusal to hand over the necessary documentation to enable Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA, to undertake optimum revenue collection under the transferred functions. Um, I, the governor, grossly violated Article 201 of the Constitution on the prudent use of financial resources and Section 159 of the Public Finance Management Act as read together with Section 7 of the Nairobi City County uh, Tax Waivers Administration Act 2013 by unilaterally and arbitrarily issuing waivers in total disregard of the law. J, the governor has violated the provisions of Article 201D of the Constitution on Principles that Guide All Aspects of Public Finance in the Republic, and 2271 on Procurement of Public Goods and Services and the Provisions of the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015 by willfully interfering in the award of the tender for the construction of the Dandora Stadium as established by the PPRB, leading to loss of public funds in overseeing payments despite concerns by technical officers. K. The governor has violated the provisions of Article 201 of the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act 2012 on principles that guide all aspects of prudent use of public finance, where either intentionally or negligently he presided over the massive loss and theft of county public funds 
In the three years he has been in office, as evidenced by the Auditor General's report of 2020-2019, which raised the red flag over cities told to of four 204.2 million projects, as well as a failure by the county government to meet its revenue targets. Uh, I, L, the governor has violated the provisions of Article 5 of the deed of transfer of functions by sabotaging the transfer of functions. The governor is yet to provide NMS with crucial information necessary in aiding and carrying out of the transferred functions. Come in. Take your seat, Senator Wako. <laughs> okay. B, abuse of office. The particulars cited under the ground are as follows. A, the governor has abused his office by violating Article 75 of the Constitution as read together with Section 2 and 13 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on the conduct of state officers where the governor has persistently intimidated, harassed, molested officers of the county executive, including blackmailing his county executive committee, members and chief officers with one-year contracts, whose renewal he has undertaken arbitrarily, leaving the officers jittery about their employment and creating a climate of fear, uncertainty, and despondence. B, the governor has abused his office by violating Article 75 of the Constitution as read together with Section 16 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 by unlawfully using public funds. Order, Senators, you need to listen to the charges. Because this is what we will have. And I want, you to listen, I want you to listen to this one. The governor has abused his office by violating Article 75 of the Constitution as read together with Section 16 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 by unlawfully using public funds to pay for his daughter's travel to New York, USA, to allegedly attend the County First Ladies Conference held during the 62nd session of the Commission on the Status of Women in 2018. C, gross misconduct. The particulars under this charge are as follows. The governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution by failing to promote public confidence in the integrity in the office of the governor's fo governor following his being charged before the anti-corruption court, thus prejudicing and or compromising the social contract and trust bestowed upon him by the people of Nairobi by virtue of Article 1 of the Constitution. B, the governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution and Section 8 and 11 on the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on public trust and professionalism, where he, he is on record. I want you to listen to this, Honorable Senators. The governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution and Section 8 and 11 on the Leadership and Integrity of Act, Act, 20, uh, Act 2012 on Public Trust and Professionalism, where he is on record admitting that he was intoxicated and thus not in the right frame of mind when he signed the deed of transfer for the transfer of certain functions of the county to the national government in February 2020. Order, Senator Murukomen. <laughs> Order, Senator Murukomen. C. <laughs> Order. <laughs> okay, I proceed. C, the governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution and the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on the responsibilities, responsibilities of leadership by failing to professionally perform his constitutionally sanctioned duties owing to his constant absence from office, even before he was formally restrained by the courts from assessing his office due to corruption charges where the governor remained constantly un unreachable in person or in his phone for inordinately longer periods of time to the huge detriment of the performance of the functions of the executive. D. The governor has violated Article 75.1c of the Constitution as read together with Section 2 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 in respect of the, the conduct of the state officers by drawing a salary and hefty allowances and enjoying the privileges of the office 
he holds while failing to diligently report to work and being perennially absent even before he was formally restrained by the courts from accessing his office due to corruption charges. Uh, e, the governor has violated Section 8 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on public trust, where he has constantly used his position to abuse public trust in the county government by exercising the powers of his office in a manner detrimental to prudent uh, public service delivery by persistently using use of divisive and becoming language which undermines the office he holds and the county administration. F, the governor has violated Article 73 and 75 of the Constitution on conduct of state officers that is demeaning to the office they hold and Section 2 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 by persistently and willfully using, publicizing and publishing abusive and unbecoming words uh, and language as evidenced by his social media posts uh, numerous runs in which he has hurled abuses and conducted himself in a manner that undermines and demeans the office of the governor. D, uh, D crimes under national law. There are serious reasons to believe that the governor has committed crimes under national law, specifically the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, which crimes he has been charged for in the Anti-Corruption Court. Honorable Senators, Standing Order Number 75-1, B of the Senate Standing Orders, gives the Senate the option of investigate, investigating this matter by appointment of a special committee comprising 11 members or in plenary. 10, the resolution of the Senate on the motion by the Senate Majority Leader in today's order paper will therefore determine the manner in which this matter shall henceforth proceed. It is not, it's not worth, and I wish to emphasize to all honorable senators that the debate on the motion shall be limited to the substance of the motion. It is not a motion on the propriety, prudence, or even the constitutionality or the legality of the processes that have preceded the submission of this matter to the Senate. It is not a debate on the facts of the matter or their merits. It is therefore not permissible to, debate, to deviate to any other matter other than the motion before the Senate. Finally, honorable senators, the hearing of charges for the proposed removal of office of a governor is one of the most important functions of the Senate under the Constitution. I therefore urge that the Senate exercises the highest level of responsibility on this matter. I thank you. I deserve more than that. Senator, Senator Omanga, you can walk faster than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Honorable Senator's order. I have another communication on holding of a hybrid sitting during the special sitting of the Senate uh, to consider the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the governor of Nairobi City. Honorable Senators, the sitting today is special in several ways. Special because it's a sitting that is convened, is convened after we have gone on recess. Secondly, special because this is the first sitting where we will hold a hybrid sitting as provided in our Senate standing order part uh, 20 something, uh, 26A. According to the interpretation of the standing orders, a hybrid virtual sitting is a sitting that entails a sitting or meeting consisting of senators who are physically present at the location of the sitting or meeting and senators who participate in the sitting or meeting virtually from a remote location through the use of technology. Honorable Senators, the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic has affected each one of us in one way or the other, noting that its prevalence continues to increase and in line with the COVID-19 guidelines on keeping safe, I have determined that it's indeed imperative that we hold a hybrid virtual sitting to accommodate our colleagues who are not in a position to attend and participate physically. 
Honorable Senators, in order to ensure decorum, effective and efficient conduct of the hybrid seating, I hereby wish to give the following guidelines. One, login. The online platform to be used during the sitting will be Zoom video communication. Two, earlier on today, I issued guidelines on the hybrid virtual sittings where I informed senators who intended to participate in the sitting virtually to, con to conduct the office of the clerk of the Senate at least 30 minutes before the sitting commences to enable the secretariat to facilitate them with the login cr the credentials. Three, senators participating virtually must log in using their full names and their video must be on. What we mean is you must be seen. <laughs> powers and privileges. A senator shall enjoy and exercise the powers, privileges, and immunities bestowed on parliament by the Constitution, the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act 2017, and any other written law, attire and decorum. Pursuant to Standing Order 251D2, a senator participating virtually shall adhere to the standards set out under the speaker's rules on attire and decorum. Six, a senator participating in the sitting virtually shall participate from an environment which is non-political, professionally appropriate, and not distracting to other senators. Yeah, what we mean is you may appear dressed half naked and you start distracting people from <laughs> concentrating. Seven, a senator shall not participate in a virtual sitting of the House while in the chamber. Eight, a senator participating virtually must have their microphone on mute and unmute only when called upon by the presiding officer to speak. Nine, a senator shall be, vis shall be visible to the presiding officer in order to be counted for the purpose of establishing a quorum, taking a decision, or voting on a matter. 10, a senator experiencing a technical problem while participating in the proceedings. Order. 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 Order, senators. A, a senator. <laughs> That privilege may be withdrawn. <laughs> Take your seat. <laughs> okay. Okay. A senator experiencing a technical problem while participating in the proceedings virtually shall inform the presiding officer through the clerk on mobile number plus 254-722-453-239. Quorum and voting, pursuant to standing order number 251E, whenever a sitting of the Senate is held virtually, the quorum requirement shall be as specified under the Constitution and the standing, and the standing orders. And a senator who has ex ex accessed the sitting virtually shall be deemed present for purposes of establishing a quorum and taking a decision or voting on a matter. Twelve, voting during a virtual sitting shall be as specified under uh, part uh, 16, voting and divisions, notwithstanding this, voting shall be uh, by roll call. Transmission of documents, pursuant to standing orders 251H1, any document required to be tabled, issued or submitted during the sitting, will be tabled, issued, or submitted electronically through Senate table office at gmail.com. Broadcasting, pursuant to standing order 251-1, a virtual sitting of the Senate will be live streamed and the proceedings published by the Hansard and broadcasted pursuant to standing orders 237 and 239. I urge all senators participating in this sitting to adhere to these guidelines strictly and wish us all a successful first hybrid virtual seating. I thank you. Next order. Yeah. What's your point of order? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have two issues eh, on your last communication. Number one, will it apply in the next uh, sitting uh, concerning this matter? Number two, uh, can you allow an intermediate? Just come, 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 come. Repeat what you're saying. 
Yes, uh, will your communication regarding virtual participation apply in the next uh, sitting concerning this impeachment? And then secondly, can you allow an intermediary to, uh, to do that letter that is uh, supposed to be addressed to the, to the clerk of the Senate? Yes, as a point of order, Senator Murkomen. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, uh, I know we passed the, the we changed the, the order paper, I mean the standing orders, some three months ago. Mr. Speaker, the question I really want to confirm is that at what stage... O order, Senators, order, order. I need to get what the... Senator Murkomen is communicating. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, Mr. Speaker, this has been a cause of controversy in many county assemblies. I know we will not go to the merits of the case that is before us, but we know that it was reported all over the media that one of the controversies was the electronic voting and virtual participation of County Assembly of Nairobi, just like many other county assemblies across the country on this issue. To ensure that, Mr. Speaker, there will be no situation where this House will be reduced to the chaos that we've seen in county assemblies, at what stage will you communicate, like for example in this situation you gave us, you gave us a notice before, before 1.30 for senators who wanted to participate virtually. Now when the, when the sitting convenes like we've convened today, uh, at what point are you supposed to communicate to the Senate that apart from those of us who are sitting in the chambers, so and so is already participating virtually? The reason for that, Mr. Speaker, is so that we don't find ourselves in a situation where at some point we'll be told uh, so and so was part of the proceedings, but uh, Mr. Speaker, we cannot verify the results of those proceedings. I, I really hope that uh, that can be uh, done. Number two, when it comes to the voting, can a virtual, can a senator participating virtually vote electronically, or uh, is going to vote uh, by voice? Mr. Speaker, the reason for that again is because sometimes even here, if you vote by uh, using the machine. Sometimes people press no when they meant yes or yes when they meant no or abstention. At what stage, and then they have an opportunity to appeal to you and it's corrected. Someone participating virtually, Mr. Speaker, if he was only going to vote electronically, may not have the benefit of confirming whether the, the vote reflected no or yes or abstention as may be. Is that person who's voting virtually uh, uh, going to be allowed to vote electronically or might it not be better to vote by voice? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, there's a point of order from Kajuang. I'll, I'll respond to them. Senator Kajuang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I've been one of those advocating for virtual and hybrid sittings, and I'm glad that today, on a very important matter, we are going to put it to the test. I have looked at standing order 251H. Um, sorry, that's uh, 251F, standing order 251F on voting particularly when you are doing the virtual or hybrid sittings. Mr. Speaker, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation because this standing order says that where decision is to be made by way of secret ballot, a senator shall cast their vote either by roll call or electronically. Now, the problem with that, Mr. Speaker, is that if a senator is sitting behind a computer screen somewhere and they have logged into the Zoom platform that we have adopted, it is possible that they can be online but not physically present at the time of voting. Such that if the vote is electronic, anybody else close to that device can cast that electronic vote. Mr. Speaker, would, could you just tighten those gaps and make it clear that the vote on this particular subject for which the Senate has been called back into a special sitting shall, shall be by roll call. And by roll call means that a senator sitting and voting virtually must physically be present and must be seen rather than it being an electronic vote, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there's a point of order from Chariot and then, uh, then Ledama. Just press your, uh, then uh, Senator Linturi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
as a long serving member of uh, the ICT committee, we appreciate this development, Mr. Speaker. But I'd wish to bring to your attention, Mr. Speaker, that at this particular point, standing order number 252, that Senator Moses Kajuang has brought to your attention, still needs further interpretation. Decisions of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, are sometimes very controversial. And you've got to ascertain one of the, one of the reasons why we insist on members being present within the precincts of Parliament is because it's a secure space. And apart from reasons uh, beyond the control of uh, members, many a, time they cast, many a times they cast their votes at free will, Mr. Speaker. This system that is being proposed right now, Mr. Speaker, we have no way of ascertaining two things. The first one is what Senator Kajuang has raised, that at a particular time, it is actually that person who logged in that is voting, because we are using this on the Zoom platform, Mr. Speaker. And secondly also, that this person is exercising their democratic right in a free manner, free of any form of intimidation. One of the things that Parliamentary Service Commission has done, Mr. Speaker, and this is important uh, for members to note, and that's why I thought perhaps you may want to delay this decision, is that we are in the final stages of procuring an e-parliament system that will take care of the fears like what Senator Kajuang is raising. We are at the point of decision making, uh, bio the, the, the biometric uh, passwords that have been input into the system ascertain that that vote is actually coming from the particular member who's casting that particular vote, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, without having a more secure system other than the Zoom platform, I'd really wish to plead with you that you perhaps uh, reconsider some of this decision and make it that it shall not be at the free whims of members to either choose to participate here or an online uh, platform. There must be unique circumstances that demand uh, the same, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Senator, okay, Olekina, then Senator Waitangula. Mr. Speaker, um, let me thank you for your communication. I, I rise also on standing order number 251, um, 251FC. And Mr. Speaker, it says clearly, the technology is simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, and transparent. Mr. Speaker, in this country, we've had serious cases of cyber security. Mr. Speaker, would it be in order for me to request that before we can be able to implement what is in these new standing orders, that we run a pilot project, or rather even a mock session, so that we know very well that everyone is comfortable and they can be able to use that virtual seating properly for them to be able to represent their counties. Mr. Speaker, why I'm asking this is because there are times when we are sitting even in our committee sittings and doing virtual sittings. The network is not stable. You know? I mean, I, I really think that parliament procedures should not be taken in lightly. Mr. Speaker, I've read Article 123 on the power to vote by this House. And I, I'm just a little bit concerned that when we extend to allowing the Parliament of the Republic of Kenya to allow virtual sittings on matters when our own technology is not verifiable, is not secure, we will be making a mockery of the parliamentary procedures. So, Mr. Speaker, I would like you to really give a detailed ruling on this matter, you know, so that when we progress, we can be doing what we know. It can be secure, it can be verifiable. I share the same concerns as Senator Kajuang, as well as Senator from Nandi. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to beseech you to maybe suspend the operalization of that standing order, of the new changes in the standing order, until we can carry out a mock exercise, make sure that all senators have secure uh, uh, gadgets to use, you know? Because when I read this, Mr. Speaker, really, I see a lot of uh, room 
Is on for the point of just a minute. Yes. I see a lot of room for mischief. So let's keep, let's keep them short. Let me, the let, me, let me finalize, Mr. Speaker. I was not particularly happy with what I saw happening in um, Nairobi City County. Now we said we don't get into so, the, that's so a really subject it. So really, it had to do order, order, with order. the issue, Mr. Speaker, of virtual voting. Order, order, order. Finalize, Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, my plea to you is this. Let us suspend the authorization of that until either the Parliamentary Service Committee can produce secure gadgets that can be used by Parliament so that when we are here representing our counties, we can be doing so knowing that your views or are the views of your people and they, sh they shall be taken seriously. Thank you, Mr. Senator Speaker. Wetangula. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you for your communication that has uh, elicited these points of order. Mr. Speaker, Standing Order 251F3. Order, whose phone is that? Mr. Speaker, Standing order 251F3 reads as follows. Where technology is used to make a decision, measures shall be put in place to ensure that A, the system is capable of verifying the votes cast either electronically or manually. B, the integrity and confidentiality of the vote is maintained and see what the distinguished senator for Narok has read, the technology is simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, and transparent. Mr. Speaker, we would be interested as a house to know what measures have been put in place to ensure that the system is capable of verifying the votes cast, and B, the integrity and confidentiality of the vote. You have recalled this house from recess, Mr. Speaker. Every member has been obligated, and indeed they are all present, to participate in this debate. And like the Senator von Aroka said, we have not even carried out any mock trial on this system to test its efficacy. So we don't want to start experimenting on a matter that is going to determine the life, the politics, and the future of an individual whose constitutional guarantees are very clear. So I want to urge you, Mr. Speaker, that even as these new standing orders, and it's unfortunate that when these new standing orders came into effect, unlike in the past, the House was never called together to be walked through and be told that these are possibilities as we go to the future. The only measures that have been taken by Parliament to help members participate virtually is that we are sent routinely some uh, airtime uh, without caring whether you are going to put it on your phone or not. We don't even know whether every member here has a smartphone in the first place, Mr. Speaker. So I want to urge that we go to the old system even if we vote electronically, we have done before, it must be a member physically present and voting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, order, Senators. Senator Kibiru has logged in. Let us see how it works. Be patient. Thank you. Okay, I will make maybe uh, make another communication. But you have heard him, Senator Harake. Oh, sorry, sorry. Senator Linturi came faster. Sorry. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I have, I have heard uh, my colleagues speak on to this matter. And uh, Mr. Speaker, with tremendous respect, I want to invite you to apply your discretion to determine on this matter because of the seriousness of the debate that is before this house today. Mr. Speaker, why I have a problem with the combination is Mr. Speaker, number one, you realize that having heard the directions that you give in regard to the area where you sit, how you should be dressed, and so that you are able to contribute to the matter before the house, I am number one left wondering whether we have that capacity to establish whether that particular area where one is sitting complies with your direction. Number two, Mr. Speaker, the matter before this house today is not a simple matter. It's less than two years ago, less than two years ago, this country was almost going into war because for those that listened to Senator Orengo in the election petition between the current president and uh, Raila Ondinga, there was the problem of access to servers when voters or votes required verification because they were transmitted electronically and people can be able to take control of our system. Mr. Speaker, in the absence of clarity of this particular matter, leaves us wondering whether when there is a dispute, just like Senator Mukomen raised and has, we want opportunities where if, for example, in the wrong way, your ballot was accounted either yes or no, there is an opportunity to recheck. So if it's being done electronically today, then it may end up being very difficult for us to ascertain or for the person who is in a a remote place and where the network is not stable, then we'll be able to lose out to Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, I think I am of the view that considering this system has not been tested before, we are trying it. I appreciate the extent to where we've gotten in terms of technology, but we cannot forget the fact that some complaints have been raised here and there about use of technology and especially on the matter in which the, the, the proposed or the, the, the impeachment was done. And I wouldn't want us to get ourselves in, as a house to a situation whereby we will also end up in such a, in such a problem. So Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I beseech you to apply your indiscretion and allow us or the members participate basically on this matter, to, to safeguard the integrity of this process, because Mr. Speaker, you can imagine you may have been, uh, uh, you, you may have been abducted by, by, by people that have interest in this matter, and you are sitting in somewhere, and you are being told this is what you must do, because you can't rule it out. So Mr. Speaker, please, please apply your discretion to guide this house specifically on how we must deal with this matter because it's new and it's the first time okay. we are doing it. Thank Senator you. Harake, you know you logged in. Senator Harake, just take your seat. You don't carry your hand up. You just... Uh... Thank you, Mr. S Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am at a loss as to how we are questioning the use of technology and how the use of technology can, can affect the integrity of the decisions of this House when for the last eight months or almost a year now, We've been conducting business on in virtu virtual uh, rooms, Mr. Speaker. If then that has been the issue, is it in order then to even decide for us to sit and pass resolutions, draw our sitting allowances on virtual meetings throughout the our entire time? And today, why is today special? And, the f and, and to allege that technology impacts on the integrity is farthest from the truth, Mr. Speaker. And unless there's other reasons as to why this is being questioned, I don't think 
uh, we should be questioning uh, standing order 251A when in fact we've been conducting our business even before we made changes to this standing order. Mr. Speaker, I think we have to be honest with ourselves and we must embrace technology. There's no two way out unless there's other considerations. I submit, Mr. Speaker. Okay, order senators, I seek your intelligence because we must make progress. I think we have, uh, we have ventilated, this is what I want to say. One, one that we shall be able to, we can be able to tell you those who have logged in, the, the secretariat are able to do that. That's a question that was asked by Senator Murkomen. Then secondly, I want to say that we are the ones who pass these standing orders. <laughs> we must, we must, honorable senators, we must start somewhere. And we are saying we are starting, let's see how it works. Of course, it may not be perfect, but we'll also be able to make certain changes as we go ahead. But let us have confidence in what we have done ourselves as senators so that we are able to, to, to move forward. Next, uh, next order. Order number three, sorry, order number two, messages. Okay, take your seat, senators, or you freeze. Order, senators. Senator, uh, take your seats. Senator, work or you freeze. Take your nearest seat. <laughs> Honorable Senators, I wish to report to the Senate that pursuant to standing order number 413, I have received the following message dated 7th December 2020 from the Speaker of the National Assembly regarding the passage of the National Assembly of the T-Bill, Senate Bill number 36 of 2018. Pursuant to the said standing order, I now report the message. I quote, pursuant to the provisions of standing order 411, and 142 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, I hereby convey the following message from the National Assembly. Whereas the T-Bill, Senate Bill number 36 of 2018, was passed by the Senate on Wednesday 12th, uh, June 2019 with amendments and referred to the National Assembly for consideration. And whereas the National Assembly passed the said bill on Thursday, 3rd December 2020, with further amendments attached herewith, now therefore in accordance with the provisions of Article 110, of the Constitution and Standing Order Number 41, 1 and 144 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, I hereby convey the, mess, the decision of the National Assembly to the Senate. Honorable Senators, Article 112, 1B of the Constitution provides that if one house passes an ordinary bill concerning counties and the second house passes the bill in an amended form, it shall be referred back to the originating house for reconsideration. Honorable Senators, in this regard, I direct that the Standing Committee on Agriculture, Livestock, and Fisheries do deliberate on the National Assembly amendments and report to the Senate. Further, pursuant to Standing Order 151, one of the Senate Standing Order 1, I uh, orders, I direct that the National Assembly amendments to the T-Bill, Senate Bill Number 36 of 2018, be circulated to all Senators. I thank you. Next order. O okay, what's your point of order? Log in afresh so that I'm able to know which are the new points of order. Uh, the thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, for that very good communication. Mr. Speaker, I rise uh, to in a point of order seeking your directions uh, and taking into account that I come from a county where 80% of our main core business is tea, that you give a direction. This bill be so important that uh, the, the, the committee has only seven days to report back to the plenary on its deliberation of those amendments so that if those directions are given, we go home, we give a Christmas gift to the tea farmers of Muranga and other parts of tea growing areas uh, as opposed to procrastinating on this very important matter and a very good bill that was discussed by this Senate and which we know it is going to empower the millions of tea farmers in the entire Republic of Kenya, and most importantly, my county of Muranga. Thank you. Senator Chariot. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate your communication. This is a very important uh, message to the tea farmers of this country that day and day, uh, their day of freedom is nearing. Mr. Speaker, I want to agree to the proposal of Senator Kangata that indeed it is possible, and I have seen Senator Kibiru, no, no, Senator 
Senator for Embu, Jerun Dwiga, the chair of Agriculture Committee that he has logged in, that it is possible, as is being promos, pro, uh, proposed by Senator Kangata, for them to meet and within se seven days iron out any of the issues that may arise out of the amendments that were done by the National Assembly. The National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, did a lot of work on this bill, did a lot of part public participation, and it points out to the fact, Mr. Speaker, that part of the things that we need to do in enlarging democ democracy and the participation of colleagues in this House is to ensure that when you have a bill such as this that is cross-cutting, to have members of both houses participate in ways other than what is currently being provided. Mr. Speaker, I had the chance to join our colleagues from the National Assembly in public participation, and I listened to how passionately tea farmers were pleading with us that we conclude this particular exercise. I know there are one or two issues that are being raised by our colleagues. Senator uh, Gideon Moy, for example, has spoken to me in his uh, private capacity as a player in the tea industry on certain concerns that certain players will have. I believe those are issues that can be resolved at the committee of Senator Jerun Dwiga, such that they put their concurrence and give the safety measures so that investors in the tea sector do not feel as if we are stifling their rights as we pursue those of ordinary citizens. So, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please order, do order. direct so, so that order, order, we Senator. can hasten the process. Order, Senator. This was just a message from the National Assembly, and I have already directed that the, the Committee on Agriculture takes up the matter and concludes it. So we are not opening a discussion now, because it is uh, it is just a message. It will come. It's a message from the National Assembly. Yeah, we don't de we don't debate messages, Senator Chararge. Let's proceed. We don't. De I have already given a ruling. Next order. Next order. Order number three. Notice of motion. Order, senators. Order. Let's let's listen. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the convenience of the house. I propose we skip that. I'm, I'm not going to give notice. Next order is saying we skip it. So next order. Okay. okay. Order, order, senators. Order, and that's why I'm saying you know it's important to listen. <laughs> You know, he has declined it, and in the absence of a notice of motion, this is what I want to communicate. I know that the leader of majority, in whose name the notice of motion, at order number three, in today's order paper, has failed to give notice of the motion set out under order number four. As a result, both orders become the subject of standing order number 56 and 59, respectively. Standing Order 56 provides as follows, and I quote, 56.1, a notice of motion may be withdrawn by the senator who gave the notice. Standing Order number 59 on the time for moving motion provides as follows. One, that the Senate Business Committee shall allocate time and sequence of the publication in the order paper of every motion approved by the speaker. Two, save for a special motion as senator who has a motion in his or her name may authorize in writing another senator to move that motion in the senator's stead or on conclusion of debate and before the question is put to reply to the senator's stead. Three, where no senator moves a motion at the time specified by or under the standing orders, such motion shall not be published again in the order paper during the same session except with the leave of the speaker. Honorable Senators, as earlier explained, Standing Order Number 75 provides only two options for the Senate when it has to investigate the matter of a proposed removal from office by impeachment of a governor of a county. The two options are either one, by a special 